very good morning to one and all topic for today's presentation is the middle year this is divided into two parts middle year one and the two now in first part we are going to see the boundaries of the middle ear cavity and the details of the tympanic membrane now where it is located the middle ear it is located in the petrous part of the temporal bone this is filled with the ear and this is lined by a mucous membrane now characteristic feature of it this is of the full adult size at birth and this communicates anteriorly with the lateral wall of the nasopharynx via the auditory tube and posteriorly it communicates with that of the mastoid antrum through the adductors to the antrum now when you take a coronal section this is seen as a biconcave disc the vertical and the anterior posterior diameter of it these are around 15 mm in diameter while the transverse diameters these are different at the roof floor and the center now at the roof these are around 6 mm in diameter in the center they are around 2 mm while and in the floor they are around 4 mm the middle ear this is sandwiched between that of the external ear and the internal ear now outside this mucous lining the middle ear it contains a chain of three ossicles this is the malleus this is incus and this is the stapes here also two muscles are lying the tensor tympani and the stapedius muscle and the some blood vessels and the nerves these are lying here now this ossicles these are joined together by synovial joint which extends across the cavity from that of the tympanic membrane to the fenestra vestibuli that is the oval window now this tympanic cavity it is further divided into epitympanum the mesotympanum and the hypotympanum now this is epitympanum which is lying above the tympanic membrane this is a tympanic membrane epitympanum part is lying above the tympanic membrane and this is contains the head of the malleus the body and the short process of the incus the mesotympanum part of it this is lying opposite to that of the tympanic membrane this is a narrowest part and it contains the handle of the malleus the long process of the incus and the steps hypotympanum part this is lying below tympanic membrane moving on to the boundaries of the middle ear cavity this is roughly cuboidal in outline and this presents the six walls it is having the roof floor anterior wall a posterior wall the medial and the lateral walls keep a match box in your hand and see the anterior posterior roof floor medial and the lateral walls of it the roof it is wider than that of the floor the anterior wall is narrow than the posterior wall the medial and the lateral wall they project with their convexities towards the tympanic cavity and it looks like that of the hover glass constriction the roof of the middle ear this is formed by a bone that is known as a tegment tympani now this is nothing but a thin plate of the petrous temporal bone and this is intervening bet between the tympanic cavity and the middle cranial fossa and this bony plate this is pierced by 
the laser and the greater petrosal nodes two canals are lying onto the pigment tympani this is the laser and the greater petrosal canal through which the laser and the greater petrosal node they traverse it if the tegment tympani is not ossified then infection from the tympanic cavity which is lying below that may extend to that of the cerebral meninges now the floor of middle ear cavity this is formed by the jugular fossa which is lying under surface of the petrous temporal bone again this is related with the superior bulb of internal jugular vein now if the bony fossa is deficient where the cavity middle ear cavity this is separated from the, that of the vein only by the mucous membrane this floor this is related with the tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve which pierces the floor and enters into the tympanic cavity through an aperture which is lying between the jugular fossa and the lower opening of the carotid canal a pinpoint aperture is there through which passes the tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve the anterior wall of the tympanic cavity in the lower part it is bounded by the posterior wall of the bony carotid canal now here you can see this is the internal carotid artery and a sympathetic plexus around it now here the bony canal where the internal carotid artery and a sympathetic plexus around it is lying and this part of the wall this is perforated by the superior and the inferior carotico tympanic vessels and the nerve the upper part of the anterior wall this presents the two parallel bony canals the upper one is for the tensor tympani muscle while the lower is for the auditory tube both canals they pass forwards downwards and meet the this both canals they pass forwards downwards and medially and they open at the junction of petrous and the squamous part of the temporal bone a bony partition is there between the two which extends towards the medial wall of the tympanic cavity now for the anterior wall we had seen in the lower part there is the internal carotid artery while in the upper part two bony canals upper one for tensor tympani and the lower one is for the auditory tube moving on to the posterior wall of the middle ear cavity this is wider above than below this is the posterior wall this is wider above than below and it communicates with that of the mastoid antrum through the adductus to the antrum So this is adductus to the antrum. The fossa incudis in the lower part of the adductus. There is a short process of the incus is attached. That is known as the fossa is known as fossa incudis. The lower part of the posterior wall. Now here you can see the lower part of the posterior wall. This is occupied by a bony canal. through which the facial nerve it descends up to that of the stylomastoid foramen then there is a hollow pyramidal eminence you can see here a pyramidal eminence which projects forward from upper part of the facial canal and this contains the stapedius muscle and its nerve supply 
Now at the apex of the pyramid, there is a pinpoint opening through which the stapedius muscle it passes forwards and is attached to the neck of the steps. The medial wall of the middle ear it faces towards the bony labyrinth of the internal ear. And the following features are seen. There is a rounded elevation. This is produced by the basal turn of the cochlea. This is known as a promontory. The tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve. It ramifies on this promontory and forms a tympanic plexus. Then posterior superiorly. There is a fenestra vestibuli, which is a reniform aperture. This is situated behind and above that of the promontory. And this opening, this is closed in the recent step by base of the steps and the annular ligament. Then there is one more window, which is seen in the posterior inferior that is below and behind the promontory this is known as fenestra cochlea this is also closed in the recent step by the trilaminar secondary tympanic membrane and of this separates the tympanic cavity from the scalar tympani of the internal ear then there is a sinus tympani now this is a depression which is lying behind that of the promontory and it indicates the position of the ampulla of the posterior semicircular canal. This is present behind the promontory. The oblique part of the facial nerve canal, it extends downwards and backwards above the fenestra vestibuli until it joins the vertical part of the bony canal. This is lying along the posterior wall of the tympan. Then there is a processus trochleariformis. This is a hook-like process which is derived from the backward extension of the bony partition intervening between the tensor tympani and the auditory tube extends towards the medial wall. Now the tendon of this tensor tympani muscle, this turns laterally around the process trochleary formis before it ins inserts onto the handle of the malleus. Now the lateral wall of the tympanic cavity, this is formed by medial surface of the tympanic membrane. More specific, the mucus covered medial surface of the tympanic membrane. This is forming the lateral wall of the middle ear cavity, which presents convexity towards the tympanic cavity. And the maximum point of the convexity, this is known as umbo. Now, beneath the mucus layer, the tympanic membrane it gives attachment to the handle of the malleus. The corda tympani nerve, it crosses the medial side of the handle of the malleus at the junction of the pars flaxida and a pars tensa. These are two parts of the tympanic membrane. So at the junction, the corda tympani nerve crosses the medial side of the handle of the malleus. Now close to the anterior margin of the tympanic membrane, The lateral wall, it presents a slit-like opening that is known as a petrotympanic fissure. The medial end of that fissure, petrotympanic fissure, this is known as anterior canaliculus for the corda tympani nerve. 
So from the medial end of that petrotympanic fissure passes the coda tympani nerve and the anterior ligament of the malleus. The posterior canaliculus for the coda tympani nerve it is situated behind that of the tympanic membrane. Now the epitympanic part of the lateral wall this is formed by the squamous part of the temporal bone and it contains the head and the anterior process of the malleus and the body and the short process body and the short process of the incus so this is the epitympanic part in the lateral wall of the middle ear cavity This is a section taken at the petromastoid part. So here you can see it is seen like a pistol. So this will be the nozzle of it. This is the handle of the pistol while this is the mastoid antrum which is the posterior part. Now here you can see the anterior malleolar fold and the posterior malleolar fold. This is a coda tympani nerve which is crossing the handle of the malleus, medial end of it. This is a tensor tympani muscle which inserts onto the handle of malleus. This is a tympanic membrane. This is past tensor of it. This will be the past plexiva of the it. Tympanic membrane. This is a, also known as eardrum. This is oval, semi-transparent, it is pearly grey, trilaminar membrane which separates the tympanic cavity from the external acoustic meatus. And it is around 9 to 10 millimeters in diameter. This is obliquely placed at an acute angle around 55 degrees with the floor of the external acoustic meatus. Now in case of the newborns it is almost horizontal so the noisy sound can be withstand better than that of the adult. The circumference of the tympanic membrane this is made up of the fibrocartilaginous ring now this is attached to the sulcus of the tympanic plate which is lying at the bottom of the external acoustic meatus. The tympanic membrane it is divided into two parts. These are the anterior and the posterior malleolar folds. This is anterior malleolar fold, this is posterior malleolar fold. Then the pars flaxida, this is a small triangular lax area above the malleolar folds. And this is a pars tensor which occupies the rest of the membrane. And this is rendered out by that of the handle of the malleus. And by that of the radiative fibers of the intermediate layer which from that of the handle. The tympanic membrane it is having two surfaces the lateral surface and the medial surface. The lateral surface it is concave it is directed downwards, forwards and laterally. As a result of it, the anterior wall and the floor of the external meatus, these are longer than the posterior wall and the roof. Now the medial surface is convex and it bulges towards the tympanic cavity. The maximum point of the convexity is known as umbo. 
and this surface it receives the attachment of the handle of the malleus. Now this is lying in between that of the fibrous and the mucous layers of the tympanic membrane and extends from above with a downward and somewhat backward inclination. So here is downward and backward inclination up to the center of the membrane. Here the handle of the malleus this is crossed by the coda tympani nerve which runs forward between the fibrous and the mucous layers of the membrane at the junction of the pars flaxida and the pars tensa. When you see the detailed structure of the tympanic membrane from outside inward there is outer there is outer cuticular layer intermediate fibrous layer and the inner mucus layer now this is lying outer cuticular layer this is lined by the hairless stratified squamous keratinized epithelium and this is continuous with the skin of the external acoustic meatus. The intermediate fibrous layer it consists of the outer radiating outer radiating fibers and inner circular fibers. The radiating fibers they diverge from the handle of malleus to the periphery. So the radial collagen fiber layer, this is diverting from the handle of malleus towards periphery, while the circular fibers, these are abundant at the periphery and they are scanty at the center. The inner mucosal layer, this is lined by the simple columnar or a squamous epithelium with patches of the ciliated cells in the upper part of the membrane. Now there are some recesses are related with the tympanic membrane. There is anterior recess which is present between the anterior malleolar fold and the handle of the malleus containing the coda tympani nerve. The posterior recess is lying between the posterior malleolar fold and the handle of malleus containing the coda tympani nerve and there is prusak space. This is a mucous recess which is lying above the lateral process of the malleus and intervenes between the neck of the malleus and the pars flaxida of the tympanic membrane. So this is pars flaxida. So somewhere here above the lateral process of the malleus, the prusak space is lying. The arterial supply of the tympanic membrane, it is supplied by the deep auricular branch of the maxillary artery, which ramifies beneath that of the cuticular layer, and it is also supplied by the stylomustoid branch of the posterior auricular and the anterior tympanic branch of the maxillary artery. These both arteries they supply the mucus layer. The outer layer it drains into the external jugular vein while the inner layer it drains into the transverse sinus and the pterygoid venous plexus. Nerve supply of tympanic membrane. The cuticular layer, this is supplied by the auriculotemporal nerve in the upper and the anterior part of the membrane, while the auricular branch of the vagus, which supplies the lower and the posterior part of the membrane. The mucus layer is supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve through the tympanic plexus.
moving on to the development of the tympanic membrane now this is derived from all the three sources that is the three germinal layers ectoderm endoderm and the mesoderm the cuticular layer this is developed from the ectoderm of the dorsal end of the first branchial layer while the intermediate layer fibrous layer this is derived from the mesoderm of the adjoining branchial arches and the innermost mucus layer it is derived from the endoderm of the tubotympanic recess on external examination of the tympanic membrane through the speculum a cone of light is seen in the antero inferior part quadrant of the membrane now beneath the membrane this is you can see here the pars flexida and the pars tensa beneath the membrane the handle of malleus this is seen as a yellow strip which extends from center upward and forward now a white prominence in the upper part of the strip this represents the lateral process of the malleus and the long process of the incus this is seen as a white streak which is lying behind and parallel to the upper part of the malleus of the handle of the malleus so somewhere here you can see the long process of the incus so just to conclude we had seen the roof floor the anterior wall the posterior wall the medial and the lateral walls of the tympanic cavity and the details of the tympanic membrane thank you